Here I present some additional applications submitted to me by Werner Miller. And he has really come up with some extremely creative ways of working with Bessie sequences. In particular, what he has done is he has found ways to go from an organization such as we have here, randomly stack these, and then very ingeniously convert it to a Bessie sequence. Once it's a Bessie sequence, we can perform any one of the two dozen shuffling techniques, all of which will preserve the fundamental structure of the sequence. And then Warner Miller gives some ingenious ways of converting back from a Bessie sequence to a division of the packet into two sets of four of a kind. Okay, well, let's dive in and, and I think you'll see why I'm so impressed with what he has submitted here yet again. Okay, so if you can focus on what's called version three over here, that's what we'll look at first. Okay, so I have the four jacks and the four aces. So we can just randomly stack these. We'll turn them face down. Have the spectator decide how to stack those sets of four. Now what we're going to do is something he calls a triangle deal. Okay, so we're going to go clockwise first and then counterclockwise for the second time through. So let me show you how this works. So you go one, two, three, and we're moving in the direction that a clock would flow. When you're done with that, you pick up the first pile that you doubt and you go in counterclockwise direction. And believe it or not, it's converted that two sets of four of a kind to a Bessie sequence. I don't know how in the world he came up with this. Okay, so let me just kind of carefully show that to you. Even though we've, if you've been watching any of the videos in this series, you can immediately see that this is a Bessie sequence, but uh, maybe you're jumping right to this one. Okay, so the basic structure of a Bessie sequence is either um, represented by X's and O's, if you prefer, or zeros and ones. We've been using the zeros and ones representation. Okay, so a Bessie sequence is the following. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. And it ends up that if you have a packet of cards that conforms to this arrangement of the cards, it is invariant under dozens of shuffling procedures used today. So how do we check to see that this is a Bessie sequence? Well, what we're looking for is in the end, the ones will be separated into one pile and the zeros into the other pile. So you can think of the ones as representing either jacks or kings, it doesn't matter. And then zeros will represent the opposite card value, jack or king. So right now, what we're looking at is we can associate the jack with ones. So wherever a one is located, we're marking where a jack is. A one there, a jack here, one there, a jack here. All of the zeros are marking the locations of the aces. Okay, so this is a true Bessie sequence. Now what that means then is we can put it through any of the many shuffles I've shown you in this series devoted to Bessie sequences. Now I'm going to confine myself to the ones that he happens to recommend in his write-up because I don't want this to be a full review of the entire Bessie sequence series. It would just be too much to take in and it would take too long, okay? So the one shuffle that he focuses on in this version three is the Australian shuffle. So what he says to do is go ahead and perform the Australian shuffle as many times as the spectator calls for, okay? 
So if you haven't seen this before, the Australian shuffle is done as follows. It's down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. The last one goes on top. That is an Australian shuffle. And so at this point, you would ask the spectator, would you like me to perform another one of those? Or you could even ask for a number, like perform it three times. It's a free choice. Once the spectator is persuaded that the order of the cards is beyond the knowledge of anybody, we will now go ahead and convert it from a Bessie sequence, because it still is. Let me just show you that. Australian shuffles preserve Bessie sequence structures. And so you can see that it's done that. We have an ace, two jacks between another ace, and then we have two jacks on the end with two aces in between. That is a Bessie sequence. So from here to undo the Bessie structure, he recommends the following. Just perform the triangle deal a second time. Unbelievable. So you just go in clockwise orientation for your dealing. And then you pick up the first pile first and stack in the opposite orientation, which will now be counterclockwise. This is guaranteed to separate the packet into two sets of four. So I'll just take the bottom four and the top four. And we will now have separated the aces from the jacks. Absolutely remarkable. Okay, so that is the first one. It's called a triangle deal. Okay, so who would have ever thought that this dealing, which is very orderly and relatively easy to remember, would allow you to convert a packet such as this, two sets of four of a kind, into a Bessie sequence, once there, you can mix until the cows come home. It won't hurt this. And then to get back to where you started, you perform the same triangle deal again. Unbelievable. Okay, a version, what he calls version four down here. Let's take a look at that one now. Okay, for version four, we're going to begin the same with four aces and four jacks. It can actually be any four of a kind. And we can have the spectator decide how these are stacked together. Okay, and turn those face down. Now, what he asks you to do here, so if you just read along on the left there under version four, he says, Klondike shuffle one pair to the table. Just one pair. Just like that. Okay and then set the rest of the cards on top. Okay, so we've just climbed out one pair to the table. Now what we're going to do is we're going to deal the cards into two piles. Just a left-right deal. And then we're going to pull off the top card of each of those two piles. And then we're going to stack the piles from left to right which is the same order in which they were dealt. So it's easy to remember. And then you just repeat that. Left, right, left, right, until you exhaust all of the cards. Take off the top card of each, set it on top of the growing pile down below. Stack from left to right. Repeat again. Left, right, left, right. Remove the top card set on top of the piles down below. We're down to one card in each of these top piles. Take those, set them on top. Have the spectator decide how to stack these left on right, right on left. And you have just converted those four aces and those four jacks into a Bessie sequence. Jack, ace, ace, jack, ace, jack, jack, ace.
This packet is now protected. It can be put through any and all shuffles talked about in this series devoted to the Bessie sequence. And if you've watched all of the videos presenting all of the different shuffles that I have discovered that you can perform on this without harming it, you could mix this literally for hours with the spectator deciding the quantity and order of all these many shuffles. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to just use one of the many shuffles that preserves this sequence. And the one that he recommends in his right up here on the left is just the LR shuffle with random stacking being decided by the spectator. Okay, so you just do a left, right, left, right. Ask the spectator, how would you like these stacked? Left on right or right on left? Maybe they want right on left. That's just fine. Okay. How would you like the stacking now? Right on left again? Okay, that's fine. And you can do as many of these as the spectator would like. This time you want left on right. Okay. Now, you know, if you've watched the series, that we can deal into four piles. Well, we can do any of those 25 shuffles or so. Okay, so just realized you can do so much mixing of this and it won't hurt it. It's still a Bessie sequence. <laughs> there you go. Okay, it still has our special structure type. Okay, now... To get it back, to undo, to pull the ones out from the zeros, all we have to do is repeat what we did to get into this Bessie arrangement, okay? Where we did this left-right shuffle and then pulled off the top card and so forth, okay? So you just, you just do a left-right. I don't know how in the world he discovered that this works, that this would <laughs> do what it's doing. And you st stack from left to right, just like we were doing before. When we were converting it to a Bessie sequence, you take these two, set them there, stack left on right. We're almost there. Left, right, left, right. Take off the top. Set them down below. We only have one left in each pile. Take those, set those down below. And you have separated the jacks from the aces. So I'm presenting these here as additional elements that you can employ when performing any routine that uses a Bessie sequence, okay? And so this is another wonderful way to go from this structure type, where they're just now randomly stacked, to a Bessie sequence, and then to take it back again after you've done whatever mixing the spectator asks for. Okay, so that is version four. Let's take a look at version five. Okay, we begin as before. We're going to work with the four aces and the four jacks. Doesn't matter how these are stacked as blocks of cards, okay? You can have the spectator decide that. Okay, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to begin with a left-right shuffle where the spectator can freely decide how to stack these, left on right or right on left. Okay, that's great, okay? So you can think of the spectator having their first decision there. Let's see, should we stack left on the right or right on left? Well, perhaps it's only fair that the performer also make a choice or make a decision here. So what I'm going to do is, since this is my first decision, I'm simply going to move one card to the bottom. Okay, that is my free choice to make. Now we're going to do a left, right, left, right again. Spectators allowed to make their second decision, namely how to stack these. Maybe they'll choose to stack left on right. That's just fine. Okay, well, I'm given a second decision as well. 
And what I'm going to decide to do is move the top two cards to the bottom. One, two. Once I've done that, we have converted those two blocks of four of a kind into a Bessie sequence, which will now be preserved relative to all those many, many shuffles. So here we are again. <laughs> Betsy sequence. Amazing. Okay. Um, and then of all the many shuffles we can perform, he suggests in his write-up for version 5 to use what I have called the leap frog shuffle. Okay. So for those who have been watching the series, you may recall, this is where you deal the cards into four piles from left to right. And we're free, actually. Uh, maybe I'll expand it a little bit. Um, the spectator is free to stack from left to right consecutively, or from right to left consecutively, or they can perform this leapfrog shuffle from left to right or right to left. Well, what's that? Well, the leapfrog from left to right simply means you pick up this one and you leap over, it's like a little frog leaping over its neighbor. You pick up this one and leap over its neighbor. And here we have random stacking decided by the spectator. Okay. Now you can do as many of these as you would like or the spectator would like. Okay. Would you like to go from left to right, right to left? And do you want to do the leapfrog or just consecutive stacking? You want to go from right to left? but no leapfrog. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Okay, why don't we just do one more of those. But the reality is you can do as many of these as you like. Maybe they choose to do uh, right to left again, but this time to do a leapfrog approach. So pick this up and leap over that one. This one leaps over that one. Random stacking here, okay. Now, amazingly, the Bessie structure is unharmed. This is still a Bessie sequence, as you can see. Now, to convert it back to two sets of four of a kind, we do the following. We simply deal left, right, move the top card to the bottom, left, right, move the top card to the bottom, left, right, move the top card to the bottom, left, right. What mad scientist would come up with such a procedure? <laughs> mad scientist in a good way, in a good way, not a bad way, in a good way. Man, oh man, unbelievable, the creativity here. And so I thought these were just too good to not share with my viewers. Just can't imagine how he came up with such interesting ways to convert between these different packet types. Okay, and version six is the last one that he has sent to me. I suppose I should say so far, but these are all of the ones I've received from him. And one of the things I find most impressive is how quickly he came up with these. <laughs> I just... Uh, anyway, mind-blowing, actually. Okay, now this one's going to be a little different, but super cool, actually. Um, in, in some ways, it, it might be my favorite of all of these, actually. Um, partly because there's a, a simple elegance to it. So what, we, what he suggests here is that you, have, you work with the four sevens and the four queens. And it is important to uh, work with uh, card values that have five letters in their names for, th for this procedure to work. And if they do, the procedure works beautifully, as you'll see. Now, there are a couple of ways of beginning. Um, what he suggests is go ahead and openly create a cyclic packet by alternating the queens with the sevens, okay? So what that means then is go ahead and you put one queen there and one seven here, a queen, a seven, a queen, a seven, a 
queen a seven. Okay. Now my viewers know that there is a nice way to accomplish creating this little cyclic structure using the Klondike Shuffle. So that's just another way of doing it. But there's nothing wrong with doing it the way that he's recommended here. Because for one thing, the spectator is seeing for themselves how perfectly interlaced and tangled these cards are, right? And now we're going to go ahead and kind of mix them further beyond this initial organization of the cards, okay? So uh, we would go ahead and just uh, close that up. Now, because it is cyclic, you can freely cut the deck or pack, pack it. You can cut it anywhere, and it will not undermine the fact that it alternates sevens with the queens. Now, the starting number, or starting card might be different. Now it's a seven versus a queen on top, but that doesn't matter. This is a cyclic packet with cycle length two, because there's a pattern that repeats every two cards, seven queen seven queen, seven queen, and so forth, okay? Now, he also mentions the Charlie A shuffle. And for those who are familiar with my YouTube channel, Hidden Structures, I have a video on the Charlie A shuffle. And the Charlie A sh shuffle is a wonderful way to supposedly randomize a cyclic packet when, in fact, each one of these little charlie shuffles is equivalent to an ordinary cutting of the cards at some location so all of this movement of the cards is really just equivalent to uh, finding some place in the packet where you cut it and do that okay even though it sure looks like a lot more is happening and i guess i can just kind of show that to you that we have not harmed the fundamental structure of this alternating packet Okay, now from here, <laughs> so we want to convert this. This is like a one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. It's, you know, it's like this, where it's like 10, 10, 10, 10, as far as the digits. We want to convert it to a Bessie sequence because it's only in that organization of the cards which will yield a structure that is invariant under the many shuffles that I've shown you in this series. Okay, and the way we're going to do it is we're just going to spell queens followed by sevens. Those two spellings will take this alternating packet and arrange it in this way. <laughs> how, how in the world would you see that ahead of time? Okay, so Q-U-E-E-N-S. So we spelled queens. S E V E N S. Believe it or not, <clears throat> we're there. We have a Bessie sequence. E, how would you figure that out? You know, if he had worked on it for six months, I might not be so impressed, I suppose. But to do it in a couple of days, it's like, what the heck? <laughs> how would you know that it would have that effect? Okay, well, it's a Bessie sequence now, and so you can relax when performing any one of those 25 to 30 shuffles that we've presented. None of them will harm the fundamental nature of this packet, okay? And then once you've done those to the content of the spectator, we're now going to convert it back. We're going to pull the ones and zeros apart. Well, there's actually a few ways to do it. Because think about it. This is a Bessie sequence, right? And what have we just shown you in versions 4 and 5? We've shown you ways of going from here to two distinct sets of four of a kind. So you can use the conversion procedures shown in the previous two little routines to separate the sevens from the queens, if you would like. And that's one of the wonderful aspects of what I'm sharing with you from Warner Miller, is that these are modular, converting from 
two sets of four of a kind to a Vesey sequence, or converting that back from a Vesey sequence to two sets of four of a kind, you can mix and match those in terms of which one you use in combination with the other. So you're converting in one direction and then you're converting back in the other direction. Well, how you do that, you can do that in a number of different ways now. We have multiple ways of doing that. So he mentions that in his write-up at the bottom. But he also points out, he says, well, you could do that. You can kind of use what we've shown you thus far. But he says here, he says, but why not restore instead the cyclical order the cards were openly arranged in? You know, so it's kind of a playful question. It is surprisingly easy. Simply spell once more queens followed by sevens. And that will take you back to an alternating structure. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so let's just show you that. So, so if we now spell queens, Q-U-E-E-N-S, put the rest on top, sevens, S-E-V-E-N-S, -E -E put the remaining cards on top, we have converted it back to an alternating packet of sevens and queens. And he points out that in his case, his first and last names have six letters in them, just as to queens and sevens. So for him, he could actually just kind of spell his name out and it would have this magical effect. And of course, once you're back to this structure here, now the spectator doesn't know that you're not showing them the faces here, right? You just spelt queens and sevens again. They have no idea. I mean, they would figure, boy, the cards are beyond the knowledge of anybody, right? Well, you know it alternates. Well, you can actually perform, if you would like to, a few Charlie A shuffles just to really convince the spectator that, boy, these cards are really beyond the knowledge of anybody. I mean, look at, look at the mess here, you know? And then you could even ask for a free cutting of the cards to seal the deal. You just have the spectator cut the cards anywhere. And now even the, the place where it's cut is outside your control as the performer. The spectator did it. Well, because this alternates, what you could do to separate it back into a set of queens and a set of sevens is just to... <laughs> An LR shuffle. Right? Just do an LR shuffle. So you'll get all the sevens together. And all the queens will be congregated together. Okay? So I found these uh, additional little applications that Warner shared with me too irresistible to not share with you as well. I guess as a final note... Um, regarding this version 6, let me just kind of um, show you actually in action what I was talking about. Uh, we began version 6, uh, if you recall, we, had, we created a cyclic packet, right? We alternated the sevens with the queens, that's just fine. Um, but if you were to begin in the same way that we started all of these applications in this video, you can just have the spectator decide how to stack these as blocks and then just perform a Klondike shuffle. And why don't we do it face up so that you can see it will convert it into an alternating structure. So that's kind of an elegant way to go from these two blocks of four of a kind to alternating or interweaving them perfectly. And then from here, you just now spell queens, followed by sevens. It will convert this to a Bessie sequence. Perform any of the many shuffles I've shown you. Once you're done doing that, you can convert it back to this alternating structure by spelling queens and sevens. Or you can use the techniques shown in any of the earlier applications here. So as always, I appreciate you watching and hope that you'll find other videos on my channel to be of interest to you.